What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 20 of Press YYZ, your Canadian escape shepherded by our love of video games. You can check us out on Twitter at Press YYZ, where you can follow us for any updates about the show and give any feedback that you may or may not have. This show is, in fact, recorded live in front of a live digital audience every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at twitch.tv slash pressyyz. And remember, Black Lives Matter. I am your host today, the pretentious film student, Alex Ballant, joined by the creator of all of our docs, Mitch George. Black Lives Matter. Yes, they do. I'm also joined by the person with all of the innuendos, who I hope we don't get one today, AJ Fraser. Black Lives Matter have always mattered and they will always continue to matter thank you uh i am also joined by the person who controls all of our tech alexander kozina vlm i was trying to imitate the bnl uh corporation from wally if you guys remember that one oh Love yes. that it's been so long yeah finally we have our head of hr nathan McInerney. how's it going guys black lives matter come on seriously it's time. I'm glad we're getting. I'm glad we're all getting to the point where we're saying Nathan's last name right. So that's nice. Yeah, I appreciate yes. that as well. Actually, finally. Yes, I have only made took it, five months. Uh, I've made it a very distinct thing of just I gotta get it right because I just I don't want to. I feel the embarrassment for myself more than actually the the proper need to get it right. right. <laughs> I, it's purely it, selfish reasons. Yeah, it always I, is. Any reason. <laughs> For yeah. me, I I just always have to like try and resist the urge not to say like the puns on your last name, whether it be macaroni or anything like that. And it's oh, just, it's, yeah. it's it's a constant battle in my psyche. I mean, for me, I use Bert and Ernie as a way to remember it. To be honest, yeah. and one of these shows, I'm gonna spit that out. And I'm gonna feel real, real bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I taught my parents in law how to say it. And it's, like, <laughs> it's like, and they're like, "Oh my god, that makes so much sense." And they never had a problem. And it's a good thing because you know their daughter has that last name now. So. I mean, speaking of last names, my fiance is so ready to give up hers because it is so difficult to have to pronounce to people, get to spell when you go into stores, and like it's her email address and everything. It's, and it has it's an her apostrophe Twitch, in it. It's her Twitch channel name, so I don't know if you feel comfortable saying it out loud, but well, whenever it, she joins a, us it, in chat. It's O'Shaughnessy, and it is not spelt in any which way the way you think it is. <laughs> and it took me probably yeah. a good six months to learn it. And I'm so I'm gonna be really glad when it's not a thing anymore. But we'll have to maybe wait you should and take see. her name. Yeah, maybe Hi or hyphenate it. Yeah, I need a 26 character last name for sure. <laughs> I know somebody that they took they took each other's name, so they just had a, both had a big long hyphenated name. It, if somebody has like a hyphenated last name and then they get married again or whatever, do they add like another hyphen to that name? Like, do they become O'Shaughnessy, George, Michaels, or? Etc. Etc. I have never seen. Well, there's that. only one way to find out in this instance. <laughs> yeah, let's. I'm do not it. getting married a second time. Once is going to be enough. Talking. Trust me. You say that now, Nathan. <laughs> you know how much of an issue it's been to try to plan this wedding around a goddamn pandemic. Fair. I'm well, done with weddings when this is over. That'll be enough. That's why I did it in three months. Three months we were out and dry. No more. Weddings. That would have been a good idea if we had known what was going to happen. To be honest. Well, what? in all fairness, I knocked my wife up, so, you know. Hey, we had to Another way to boy. do it. Yeah. Atta boy. So I don't have a good segue out of this, but... Um, <laughs> there isn't been... one, I'm sorry. Uh, so last week wasn't a normal week, and I'm really glad that we decided to take the time to kind of let the... Let more important issues fly. But as well, this podcast, I know for me especially, is an escape, especially during a time like this where, like, mental health kind of has been really hard to deal with and so i'm really happy to be back but we just wanted to make it a very clear point that we are still very much invested in the the situations that are happening right now and wanted to still remind everyone that those important that those issues are still important i'm also now, really proud of sorry i just want to say before you do yeah, that go ahead. i'm really proud of the fact that we started this show none of that was planned it was not anywhere in any docs or anything alex started it we kept the train going i'm glad that we're all being more conscious of what's going on in the world and not just letting it, not trying to sweep it under the rug and just have fun with this because right now the world is not fun. Uh, we are happy to bring you any small amount of joy that we can through what we're doing, but there are absolutely bigger, more important things happening outside of this sphere. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Like I've, I've still been posting like 
a whole bunch of like stuff that I've like found all over the internet and on Reddit and stuff like on my mm-hmm. Facebook and stuff. And I've noticed like the number of likes I get have uh, significantly dropped uh, over the last couple of weeks. So it's, um, and it's usually the same people who will comment or like every time. And so, you know, that it's doing it, the, the, it's take the problem is taking care of itself in terms of like my friends list on Facebook and stuff where pe- <laughs> yeah. people those the bad people have either stopped following me or unfriended me altogether which is perfect. I don't think I've lost any friends like I I take a lot of what yeah, you post I'm... honestly and repost it but I don't think I've mm-hmm. lost any friends to this point but I don't I don't use Facebook too much to care to go find yeah. out. Oh, man, I was, I, wait, I was going to ask is this on Facebook or Twitter? Uh yes. Oh. Yeah, I was gonna say for me it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. A lot, a lot of what I'm doing is I'm taking like the the Twitter posts that you'll find on Reddit or just Twitter posts that I find naturally, and I will post them on Facebook because I still have a lot of friends who still use uh, Facebook and stuff like that, and they should be informed. Okay, yeah, because yes. I don't Facebook. I very rarely use these days. I still keep an account because you kind of have to, but yeah. I, I really only have my Facebook account at this point. I've contemplated deleting it or suspending it or whatever you can do for it a few times. I really only have it because I have a lot of family members who's either I don't have their phone number, or I don't have contact info, and the easiest way to get in touch with some older family members is just through Facebook. So, sorry, Alex, you were segueing? I was going to say, <laughs> um, so despite us still taking the, the time to let other voices be heard, we have been still playing a ton of video games. I know for I, I know for a fact I have been playing a lot, but I it's not about me right now. I want to hear what you guys have been playing because it's been a, been a little while since we've gotten to properly talk. What's well, everybody been doing? Speaking of escaping, um, <laughs> when in the middle of all the chaos that was last week, um, and this is going to lead into what I was actually playing. Um, SpaceX um, did uh, something amazing. Um, regardless of whether of what you feel about Elon Musk uh, as a person these days and uh, where he may have inherited his riches from, the whole story, SpaceX as an entity is uh, amazing, and so is Tesla. Uh, just as on their own merits. Um, but uh, for the first time in nine years, um, people have, uh, the American astronauts have launched uh, up to the International Space Station off of American soil. And that sort of, like, speaking of escape, they have escaped the chaos that is 2020. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that tweet going around, but. Um, <laughs> That inspired me to boot up for the first time in a, in a, a, a little while, Kerbal Space Program. I don't know if you guys have heard of or played that one. I um, played it very briefly. I played the PS4 port. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, what version are you playing on? I'm playing on uh, my PC. It yeah. can okay, run, good. it You're seems to run, version. yeah, it seems to run just fine on my laptop. Um, a, a lot of... It's one of those games that I can you can also uh, do very well uh, with, like, uh, stream play um because it doesn't require like precise timing uh so much as you know you're just sort of like waiting for a moment to happen and then you like trigger the engines or something like that but um you know i just i just started a a new career mode in that and i'm just running around trying to grab all the science i can and uh in this playthrough, I haven't quite made it to the moon yet. Um, I, I bought the... Uh, I was also inspired to buy the DLC, which I haven't really dabbled into my, myself at this point. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's good fun just to, to launch some uh, rocket ships. I remember when the Alpha came out for it, and I've mm-hmm. been, I like literally all you could do was kind of... I don't even know if you could go to the moon at that point. But that was probably the most I've ever played with it. And mm-hmm. just the idea of, like, just I remember, uh, just building the rocket and seeing how far you can go was mm-hmm. always really enticing. I just never got around to to picking it up again. And it's something that yeah. I've always kind of been looking from, like, from the other side from of just, like, looking in. But have never, like, pulled the trigger on it. Because I feel like mm-hmm. if I got invested in it, it would be, like, real bad. Yeah, there is a... They did announce, I think... Uh, late last year or something like that that there was a, there is a sequel coming it's been delayed so it, though 
it has it been yeah. delayed until next year it, at some point it, yeah it almost it almost made the show this week because there's been some weird mm -hmm. controversy around that too where take two oh, essentially severed ties with yeah. the developer that was responsible for it and then immediately mm -hmm. tried to poach developers from that developer away to a new internal team that's going to be working on Kerbal 2 some weird um, business going on in take two and I don't like it and that's all yeah. I'm going to say on that typical take two though um, exactly for the PS for the PS4 port, I think mm -hmm. the controls just didn't jive. They weren't able to get that mouse and keyboard control to work on the PlayStation controller. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I struggled with it. Now, I do want to go back because my understanding is, um, and I did have a review code for it, but they have gone back and adjusted the controls, I'm understanding. So I need uh, to go back and give it another try at some point. I, I mean, I've got a, um, I've got a controller hooked up to my uh, laptop, and I haven't touched it because my keyboard is right here. Yeah. So I haven't I haven't given that a shot myself. But um, yeah, it's uh, it can be it can be a little daunting. It can be a little um, scary, uh, and can be a little frustrating because it's literally rocket science. Um, yeah, it, it it's a lot it's a lot of fun. Um, this is kind of a specific question, but mm -hmm. I remember way back in the day, one Anthony Gallegos, formerly of IGN in the Comedy Button, used to be really into this game. And he kind of demonstrated it, you know, on a couple of videos for the website. And he showed off how, like, you can make spaceships that look like X-Wings or other fantastical spaceships from fiction. And generally, it won't really work. You have to make your spaceships look and actually be constructed like functional real spaceships. Has that changed over time? Have they implemented like mechanics and you know features and things in the game that make it so that you can make your spaceships a little bit more fantastical, or do you have to like make it realistic? the The entire game runs on a, on a very close simulation to real rocket physics, um, where you're down down to the point where you gotta try and uh, you gotta some. Depending on what you're doing, um, you, you might want to pull out a calculator and try and calculate the delta V of your trajectory and all that stuff. Uh, I'm not that deep into it, but um, uh, in terms of the fantastical stuff, um, people have been able to kind of manipulate the physics engine in, in such a way with the stuff they've built. Because you got to factor in your, your center of mass, your center of aerodynamics, um, all, all that stuff uh, into the craft that you build in like a Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts kind of way. Um, and that will, it, it, it all, it all factors in. Um, I'm sure there's mods uh, out there on the steam workshop and whatnot um, that kind of tweak some of that so that more things would be possible. Um, but yeah, the, the, it, it it's following a, a real, a more realistic, uh, uh, physics model than most video games to try and simulate uh, what it's actually like to try and launch a rocket. So what else have what else have people been playing? So I know Alex, you said we haven't really talked much to each other about video games, but you and I actually did spend quite a bit of time talking about one game, and that game yeah, we've Predator been playing. Hunt we've been playing predator hunting grounds quite a bit there's a, a few friends of ours we've been hopping into that game with we sort of got a group together when the the sale started on the game on the psn and said let's give it a shot and holy crap it's fun it's a lot it, of fun i am absolutely loving it it's i was thinking about it since the last time we played i've been getting and we've been playing with a full squad where it's where we've been playing with five people so we have the full four people fire team and then one of us is the predator so this is like the best possible experience honestly that i think you can get with it because you're not dealing with randoms and i've been getting so many left 4 dead 2 vibes from that game not in the way that the game plays they're very different in that sense but i'm loving just the feeling of uh, when an asynchronous multiplayer game is good, it's really good. And I think Predator Hunting Grounds shows that in spades. I'm absolutely loving it. Yeah, and I think it's not a game I would have picked up, one, if it hadn't been on sale, and two, if there hadn't been a group yeah. of people in our circle that wanted to play this game. Because I don't, I jumped into a couple of public matches and it was fine. But being on, you know, being on Discord with five guys, having one person go mute and be like, all right, we're going to fuck his shit up. He is, that predator is not going to get to us, man. We're going to get him. And then have Alex come through and completely wipe the team in like two and a half minutes. Wasn't great. But we were talking oh, shit about him yeah. behind his back the whole time. 
<laughs> yeah, I could imagine nothing less. Yeah, so we've been having a lot of fun with that. I, I the f what Mitch is referring to is the first time I played Predator. Um, I didn't get to, or I was waiting for it to install, so everyone else had a little bit of practice on me because they also got to do the tutorial. So I had never played Predator at all, and I didn't know how the controls work. And the first time I played, I wiped their team as soon as I found them. <laughs> it um, also helped that they weren't super, they weren't super familiar with how to be good fire team members yet. Everyone was still very new, so I got yeah, to have I, a lot of fun with that. I, I think we've learned a lot. Like we only yeah. we had a couple of sessions, but I think we've learned a lot about the game and how to isolate the predator and deal. With, uh, and the thing too is we're all leveling up as we're playing together as a group, so we're unlocking things like the predator's net gun and audio decoys and all this crazy stuff that just makes the game so entertaining from either perspective. I know mm -hmm. the last game that we played, I wiped the team as the predator and did so by really heavily utilizing all the gear using audio decoys off of ways they all got super freaked out and i just sort of walked i i literally was like i was the predator i wasn't just going in it was it's not like any other shooter experience of you know go in mess everything up and you're done yet we really do there is a methodical approach to it of okay i'm going to distract them over here and then i'm going to climb to this tree that's over there behind them and wait until they split up to deal with the objective and then whoever split up from i'm going to go down take out a bunch of their health and then jump away and then they're all together so i'll shoot them with the laser cannon and then hop down use the elder sword which does a crap ton of damage and oh my sword. god yeah there's swords yeah, the it's predator great has yeah that's one of the biggest things about this game in particular that i love about it over something like because i i didn't play much of evolved uh, or evolve um nobody one of the did big things yeah <laughs> yeah i remember that I was the biggest it, problem i remember, I, remember I played it at a convention but one of the biggest things about like that game is and most asynchronous multiplayer games like dead by daylight or friday the 13th is that like it doesn't it's it very much feels like a 4v1 where like and that's what it is to its core but i love with predator hunting grounds where the fire team members they have objectives that they have to do where they have to fight ais and there's more to do as the fire team member than just try to fight the predator but the predator is almost your secondary objective in a in a lot of uh cases where he's just coming to just try to screw with you and so it, it really adds this extra layer that I feel like a lot of games like Friday the 13th and Dead by Daylight are missing. Because I know, like, the main thing with those is, like, you have to try to escape. But something feels different about, like, about the way Predator Hunting Grounds handles it. So I I have a, a quick question. Um, a few years ago, Ubisoft uh, released, uh, like, a, a Predator uh, DLC or surprise DLC for... Uh, one of the Tom Clancy games. Um, and one of the biggest criticisms of that is the thing that made Predator cool and scary was that you didn't know what it was. But going into this, you kind of know what you're getting into. Ha have, have there been moments that you found yourself, like, scared that you're going to die like you should if you're going to face a Predator? Oh, or, 100%. Yeah. That happened I feel a like number it's, it, of times. It's less fear in the sense that you're like you're waiting. It's it's less fear in the sense that you're waiting for for the predator to come down. But like when you when the predator shows up, there's this moment of like tension and also just like this confusion of what what's going on because of the change in perspective of you being in first person. Your view is so much more limited than what the predator can see, and so you're just kind of like really disoriented. And when he jumps down and he's like behind you, and you have to quickly turn around, and your friends are yelling at you that like he's he's on you or that like. Or that he's on someone else it's like there's there are moments of like of fear in that sense of like just kind of disorienting confusion chaos yeah it can be confusing let's say the predator is attacking you from the back you're not really going to know you're going to know you're taking damage and you'll see like a claw mark and blood across your screen and it's like oh god he's here but i don't know where and oh my god where is he oh my god come help help and then i'm dead yeah. but then someone brings me back but the other thing we got to talk about the glory kill cinematic that that happens in this game Oh my god, it's like it's, Mortal Kombat levels it of really brutal. Is. It's bad. Like it's not bad in a bad sense, but it's bad in like it's it's visceral. Like he's reaching it and he's pulling out everything. Spine, skull, all in one piece. It's it's yeah. a it's a lot. It is I know me go, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I just want to no, say no worries. I know that on this show we all make fun of me for being the person that's obsessed with PlayStation trophies. We don't make However, fun of However, are you sure? I, I don't. I make we fun of lovingly, you. We lovingly jab. 
Ilphonic, which was one of the developers of uh, Predator Hunting Rounds, previously made the Friday the 13th game. And that game was infamous for having a Terrible monster trophy. of a trophy list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, one of the trophies, I'm currently on psnprofiles.com uh, dot right now looking at the trophy list. One of the trophies is Head Counselor. Play 1,000 multiplayer matches as a counselor. As an example of the kind of grindiness you need to get up to in this game. Is the trophy list for Predator Hunting Grounds Oh, any it's better? pretty bad. It's pretty bad. There's, oh, it, no. there's some it, trophies it, like... I'd say it's oh, attainable, but it, it's definitely a grind. PSN Profiles has it at about 150 hours for the plot. Yeah. There's there's one trophy in particular where you have to get, yeah, a thousand fire team member kills as the Predator, which is... I just found one way worse. Oh, really? Which, a, as a fire it? team member, get a thousand headshot kills on AI. That doesn't... That seems way more attainable because you kill at least, like, you can kill a good amount of them per match... With the Predator and getting the fire but team But headshots, kills. though. Yeah, I mean, you know, just aim your so, gun. So, according to psnprofiles.com, the rarest trophy in the game is a trophy called Ancient, which is, as the Predator, claim a thousand fire team member trophies. Oh, yeah, so that's the other thing, is you can't just kill the fire team member, you have to do the animation where you pull out their skull, which is really time-consuming, so you don't do it. You don't do it with every single one of your kills because it leaves you very vulnerable. So the grind mm -hmm. for that would be a lot. One oh, of wow. the one of one of the only sort of silver linings with it is is we found because we've been doing <laughs> private matches, you can earn yeah. trophies in private matches. So if you really wanted to and you had people to play with, you could grind it. Right. Which we'll probably do eventually if I any could imagine. Of, if anyone yeah. really wants the platinum, we will grind for it or if cozy you pick it up dirt cheap in get, like three yeah. or four years we'll we'll grind I, it it'll take a while but we could do it i don't think i'm gonna be interested in doing so anytime <laughs> soon i'm still yeah. grinding through the final fantasy 13 platinum and again i stand by everything i said about that <laughs> game but it's a grind getting everything in that game mm -hmm. yeah can Honestly, i the, next, on the matter can i ask on, a oh, question can i ask a question yeah, about ahead. the game so the metacritic for it right now i believe is in at 56 what's the disconnect between critics and and you guys having fun with the game. I could imagine the critics are probably playing like the like public online multiplayer where we're five people who all know each other and are like can have that bit of can have more fun with it because that's because we're all sharing the same experience. It's also not a good game technically. So from a oh, technical yeah, perspective, it doesn't look great. It, it can chug at times. You do get some frame rate drops and things sort of popping in and weird hiccups in terms of like, okay, one person's hosting the game, so everyone else just like fast forwarded 15 seconds to catch up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other thing that we ran into a number of times trying to even just starting our private matches is the game just hung at the loading screen. It didn't yeah. put us in the game, which is a bit of a drag. So from a technical perspective, there are definitely bugs and flaws with yeah. the game. It's not a perfect game by any means, but when you get in there, it's a lot of fun with a group of friends you're, you know, familiar with. Mo okay, Monarchy really in the... I was, I was just sorry. Saying, I... I really hope they, I hope they fix the technical stuff. Go ahead. Monarchy in the chat uh, has a question about that. Um, is it a game that is just fun with friends? Do you think you could have fun playing with randos? I don't think it would be the same. No. Like, even when we were, like, the four of us trying to face a predator online, like, the people who play that game, like, at this point, because it's also been out for, for way longer and we're still kind of new to it, people are really good at it. So we kind of got wiped quite a few times where well, when we've been playing with the five people, it's been a lot more enjoyable. That's, like, it's been a lot closer in skill, I would say. Okay. We had another, and we had another match that the, the person playing the predator must have just gotten the game. And yeah. they didn't find us at all, so we just th blew... So, essentially, each game works that the fire team has a series of, I think, three objectives to complete, and then they go to the extraction point. The Predator's job is to find them before that and try to kill them. And then when you get to the extraction point, the Predator gets on their radar, okay, this is where they are. This is the, this is the end game now. It's the only time the fire team's location is revealed to the Predator. So they didn't find us until that extraction, and even then, we were just... We were there... And the extraction came down. We all got out except one guy who took too long. Sorry, Adam. I had to call you out on that. You totally missed the rope there. <laughs> so, um, 
what else have people been doing? Nathan, you've been very quiet. Uh, so I've had a few things. Uh, believe it or not, I've played a little bit more Animal Crossing. Uh, no. My enthusiasm for Animal Crossing is starting to wane in 500 hours in. Finally. Uh, um, I am almost done the entire DIY list. I've got about 50 recipes left, and I'm done collecting all the DIYs. So, wow. Uh, so, yeah, no, like, that, th- that's that been fun, but I'm just starting to lose... Um, lose my momentum like i don't want to go and play tonight but what i do want to go play when we're done this night is persona 5 royale oh it's so good so I it's jumped... royal right it's royal right not it's royal. royal not royale I there's know. no e I, at the end i say royale uh, you're both, both wrong weirdos. i think actually they don't say though but i think it's supposed to be persona 5 the royal but um <laughs> anyways it's really good to, um i played the original persona 5 and you can immediately see the differences in the game uh, with the ro- with the royal, uh, their story changes right away. They're introducing a character sooner that you wouldn't see until later in the game. Uh, the first palace, while there were familiar things, there were things that were completely different and new things that were added into it. Um, so they've done a really good job in doing it. And I actually picked up because uh, I said when it, the ultimate version went on sale because I would want all of the costumes and dlc so i ended up buying the ultimate edition of it and i've been dressed up as the feather man costumes which i added in so the power ranger-esque costumes with the oh. power ranger music um which has been a lot of fun so yeah no i'm uh how how are you liking it so far for your first playthrough so i'm loving it i'm right now about 44 hours in so i'm on the fourth palace um and it's i love this game this is, I'm so invested in every character. Every mm-hmm. time they introduce a new character, they almost start as kind of like a bit a- a- antagonistic to your party, but you very quickly open up. There's so much personality with every character, and I just want to continue building the relationships for all of them. And I'm just, in some ways, I'm almost treating this like my second life because it's like I want to just keep building the relationships and doing the things during the day and I I like I've got like this whole plan of like okay I got to do this and then I got to do this and then I got to do this and I absolutely love this game. I can't wait to keep playing it and I I genuinely have thought about 40 hours in now I'm going to go for the platinum because I've also seen you can do it on one playthrough the, but it's yeah, supposed to be a lot more obtainable this time. The Persona I've 5 been, tr- yeah, uh, I've, platinum was hard. I've been looking at the list and it seems like I'm already pr- pretty close besides the story stuff like i feel like i've there's not much left that i need to do besides just continue progressing through the main story and then eventually the things that are locked off i will get but i i have been absolutely loving it and i'm unfamiliar with whatever changes they've done from the original game to to this one but it's i i think that this will be probably in my top five game of the for game of the year if it kind of, if it counts because i know that it's a weird it's a little fuzzy if um it counts or not i'd say it counts we will okay. get into our game of the year discussion i think i'm very uh, excited i mean about that. nathan wanted to do it in july but we're not I was doing just saying july. next month no we're gonna save that for the end of the year <laughs> and i think another so, game that sorry go ahead yeah I, well, I was going to say, uh, I'm going to cut your segue off with my own, because I know a game that is for sure going to be in my game of the year, and I've played it. It's um, So I went down a bit of a rabbit hole. Uh, I found a, An expensive rabbit hole. A very expensive one, but it, it, it was <laughs> worth it. I can, I can say without a doubt, it's been worth it. Um, so I found uh, a used HTC Vive Pro, and I bought it, and I immediately bought Half-Life Alex. And that is one oh. of the best. It is one of the best games I've ever played in my entire life. I love Half Life Out. I finished it just yesterday. It is immersive beyond belief. There were times where I was trying to pick things up or get up using things in the environment, in the VR environment, and I was getting on my hands and knees in firefights, opening doors to cars, and shooting around corners. It Half Life Alex is one of the coolest. It's one of the most polished experiences I've ever had. I haven't played much VR, honestly. It's been that and Beat Saber, but that's I can really all say you without need. A doubt. Yeah, I, I'm curious. Something. Mm-hmm. What experience do you have with the Half Life series as a whole? Um, so I I've never played the first game. I'm 
Mm. I'm aware of it. I'm aware of mostly the beginning of Half Life One. Uh, just yeah. from just from there's there was a YouTube series called Freeman's Mind that I watched a lot where it was like a let's play of Half Life One, but like with an inner monologue of what Gordon Freeman's thinking the whole time. Mm. So I'm very familiar with the intro to Half Life One, but I've played all the way through two and Episode One and Episode Two, so. I know a lot of the the connecting tissues from what Half Life Alex does to how it connects to Half Life Two. Right. Have you like how far would you say that you're in the game thus far? I finished it. I finished it last night. Oh, okay. Yeah. How long was it? Uh, it, from my Steam, my Steam says uh, ten hours. Okay. So it's uh, it's such a fantastic experience, and I really hope that. And I, th I could see this happening with PlayStation VR and with PlayStation 5, that I could see them bringing it to, to PSVR, and I really hope that they do, because I think this is an experience that anybody who has a VR headset needs to, to play. It's just, it's so polished, and I think that was the biggest thing about, about it. And they take things that, they take tropes that are in other video games, like, there's always... In horror games, there's that level, or like, you know, yeah, where you fight like the enemy who is blind and you can't do any damage to it, and you just have to kind of go around very sneakily uh, dealing with it. They do that in, in Half Life Alex, but they do it to a level that's so cool and so immersive that I, I just I can't keep talking about how much and the ending of the game. I'm not going to spoil anything, but it actually blew my mind, and I loved it, and I. I can't wait to see what Valve does next because Valve has said that they're making more AAA VR games. Yeah, so prior to Half-Life Alex's announcement, they stated that they were working on three meaty Half-Life, uh, not Half-Life experiences, but three meaty VR experiences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously it remains to be seen what will become of that. As we know, you know, Valve has worked on a ton of prototypes to games that never came to fruition over the years, so maybe they've discarded some of those projects or reworked them into other things. I, I'm definitely excited to see what they do next as well. Half-Life Alex like episode two. Half-Life portal VR, and it's going to make everyone sick and no one's going to be able to play it. And I would, well, the uh, thing was, is, uh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, okay. I was going to say, well, the thing is with Half-Life Alex, the way that they do locomotion in that game is very smart. Um, I watched the whole video that they have on their YouTube channel about it, but it's it's they have the three different versions of locomotion, and I never got motion sickness once from it um, because the idea is like you just you choose where you want to go, and then your character instantly blinks there, and you it like goes black for a second, and so it gives you that second to adjust to the new environment, and I really appreciated that. So I think Valve has taken Valve is one of the only companies that can take a risk on VR and actually make something as polished as what Alex turned out to be. Also, I've never been more immersed in the game when somebody's been yelling my own name, even if it is spelled <laughs> wrong. I mean, mm. that's the right way for them. I think, uh, uh, yeah. I, I, as an Alex I was... myself, I think A L Y X might be the superior way to spell it. Honestly, maybe. Time to uh, change your name. I just want to say, Mitch, in yes, response sir. to what you were saying earlier about Portal, like during the production of Half Life Alex, Valve did consider making a Portal game in VR, and they pretty much definitively decided based on what you said that like yeah this just doesn't make sense it would be kind of too vomit inducing whereas something like half-life which you know naturally is about kind of soaking in your environment and about these gorgeous visa vistas and atmosphere makes a lot more sense intrinsically mm -hmm. fair and yeah it seems like it really worked out for them yes i can't keep praising it enough it is for sure one of my favorite games of this year so far if not my favorite like i think i think i liked it more than doom eternal just because with doom i knew what i was expecting where with half-life i knew it was good but i i had no idea what i was sort of i knew it was like the the killer app pr or vr game but i didn't know what i was what i was getting into but i, I think it's it's phenomenal if you want to talk game of the year i got one for you this oh, is, yes. without a doubt, my Nintendo Switch game of the year so far. We'll have to see what else Nintendo has up their sleeves. Animal Club Crossing. Clubhouse is games. Is it Animal Crossing? It's 100% oh. Clubhouse games. It's so freaking good, guys. Clubhouse games, for those who don't know, is a Nintendo-developed collection of 51 different classic board games, bar games, party games, whatever you want to call them. They have a whole bunch of games that you wouldn't expect, like Yacht Dice because apparently that game isn't trademarked just the term Yahtzee is, as well as uh, four in a row. 
also known as connect between three and five also known as connect four um lots of one that we stumbled into carmen and i literally could not put this down over the weekend we played probably like a good four hours of this game called mancala anyone what familiar with that? it what it's is that so it's essentially a board game that involves moving beads around a board and dropping them into the different pockets on the board. And the goal is to get the most beads you can in your final pocket. And there's ways to steal your opponent's beads. And you have to, like, in terms of the way it counts, because it drops one bead in every pocket after you pick up a pocket. It's, is it Mardi Gras themed? Not in the there's slightest. A, there's uh, a lot of beads. You're mentioning there are a lot of beads. beads, and it's phenomenal. And it was it was one of those one more game situations of we'll just play one more and one more and one more, and it's been two hours. So there's a lot in there that I haven't even touched yet. Lots of mini games similar to those you saw on the Wii and Wii U. There's bowling, which just looks like a Wii sports clone. Darts, which I believe was somewhere, but it just adding that Nintendo level, layer of polish into these very classic card games and board games is just it's so satisfying right now in a time where I just need to be able to just sit down, pick something up and, and play a couple of games of President or uh, some Blackjack or Texas Hold'em it's it's so good it's so, so good. So how much, how much was it? I actually don't know uh, and I've Canadian been about... 50 bucks? Yeah, 50. that's not bad. I was just looking uh, at it. Well, and $1 else that, per game. Well, something else basically. that's nice is you can play locally with other friends who have Switches without them having to own a copy of the game. There's oh, essentially a awesome. demo. There's a demo available, essentially. It's called the Clubhouse Games Guest Pass that allows you to play four of the 51 games on your own device. And then that allows you to link up with someone else who has the full game and you can play all the games together across multiple Switches, Ooh. depending on the configuration. Uh, one thing I didn't Does like it... is... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to ask, does it work handheld? Yes. Um, uh, okay. So, yeah, that's what I was wondering if you needed to have it, like, on... T uh, like, like it works handheld, like, if you have the Joy-Cons attached to this, which is what, more so what it, I'm asking. So, it, it works docked in TV mode. If you go to multiplayer, you have to use a Joy-Con sideways. You cannot use Pro Controllers, which is weird. You can use a Pro Controller for playing single player. You can play it handheld. You can play it handheld with Joy-Cons attached, Joy-Cons detached in tabletop mode okay. or laying flat. You can play it in handheld with touch. Yeah. Touch is really okay. good. I was able to play these games with my mom, who does not play video games, because it has a touch component to almost every game. It's, okay. it, it's such a nice collection, especially when it was just something nice to connect with Carmen with over the past weekend and just play a bunch of checkers and Mancala and Connect 4. It was so much fun so good it's a it's a great illustration of how e even something like just card games or again these like mundane club games can be made all that much better with just the level of polish uh that we see in this product yeah N nintendo just knocks it out of the park when they're they're adding their own panache or, or polish to any product and clubhouse games on the switch is no exception a couple of little things i didn't like overall like I talked about with the controls, the fact that there's no restart from in the game. You have to like exit out, then pick the game again and jump back into it. But with load times that are like under a second or two to actually get into the game, it's not so bad. It's mm -hmm. it, it's it's a joy. It's a game I really enjoyed when the original came out on the DS. And I'm going to put many more hours into the Switch version with Carmen for sure. That's very exciting. So, Cozy, what have you been doing? And this jam-packed uh, what we've been doing segment. Uh, I've been playing, as usual, a lot of Apex, so I'm not going to focus too much on that. I, I suppose when I switch over to playing Apex on PC, I'll probably have some more impressions there. Uh, instead, I want to talk about two other things that I've been up to. Uh, the first is something that I would have talked about a lot more on last week's episode, but obviously due to circumstances we decided not to. Uh, and it's the video game that I recently made in core for the kind of funny core game jam called Planet of the Toilet Toads. Basically, uh, to make a long story short, uh, kind of funny decided to host a game jam in collaboration with core, which is a create a game style of game, not dissimilar to say your Robloxes as a point of reference. And I decided one thing that core allows you to do is it allows you to create games from various templates. So for example, you can create a game from a like capture and hold the bases style template. You can create a game from a capture the flag style template. I decided to create a game from a capture the bases style template and I decided to make it so that you're 
roaming around a alien environment, battling other players, and fighting off these enemies, which are called the Toilet Toads, which are based off of a running joke within Kind of Funny. Uh, right now in the footage that you see on screen, I unfortunately don't have any Toilet Toads in it yet, because this is taken from a slightly earlier build of the game where I hadn't fully implemented them. Uh, but the alien environment is fully on display, and while I don't know yet whether my game managed to score a victory, I am going to be finding out very soon. Core recently rescheduled their uh, prize awardment uh, slash uh, kind of demo playthrough stream to this Friday, so I'm going to find out then and there. I, I did notice on Twitter, Senpai noticed you. Uh, you mean Greg Miller? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, and that was with my very first tweet where I announced the Toilet Toad game, Absolutely. so that's uh, really cool. The, the other thing to say is that that is Friday, June 13th? 12th? 10, or 10? 13th. Thir uh, no, it's the 12th, No, it's right? the 10th. Wait. Today's no, the 10th. Oh my god. It's the 12th. It's the Time 12th. Time is a flat circle. <laughs> yeah, it really is. So wibbly that, wobbly, for, timey wimey. For those listening on the audio version of this show, it's already happened. Go check out to Cozy's Twitter, because I'm sure he's tweeted the crap out of it. Uh, uh, but I, 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 yeah, yeah, toilet, uh, humor, I toilet it. toad. Uh, yeah. but, uh, uh, it remains to be seen, you know, where my game stands. But I'm feeling very good about things. Sweet. Um, and the other thing I briefly want to talk about: this is not a game that I played, but it's a video that I watched that I want to recommend. Uh, so around ten years ago, you know, the Metroid community was deeply divided following the release of Metroid Other M. And it's remained a game that, you know, has lingered in a lot of our consciences as just this very kind of divisive experience with, you know, a lot of not great writing. And recently, I was introduced to a video that released, I believe, yeah, released on May 31st. It's a video produced by YouTuber Lexicon Lookout. And basically what it does is it dives into the original Japanese script of Metroid Other M and discusses the ways in which the script was subtly and in other ways not so subtly changed on the kind of road to localization to the English version and how it arguably resulted in the game, you know, becoming a much different experience and being received a lot worse. Um, I, I recommend that e even if Metroid Other M is not like a source of fascination for you, I recommend that you check it out because the video also delves into a lot of other ways that prior Metroid games have not done a great job of kind of translating the original Japanese versions uh, of themselves. And yeah, it, it's a really great experience. I'm going to drop a link in the chat to the video to check out. That's very exciting. And I can't wait to see what kind of funny thinks of your game when the time comes. But until then, all we've got to do is talk about the news because there's quite a there's actually quite a bit of it this week. So let's just jump into the news. Ready, set, go. News drop. Oh my god, there's okay. so much news this week. Uh, and shoutouts, as per usual, to Monarchy, who put together a list of like 35 or 40 different news articles. Just like, oh my god, there's so much happening, and I don't know how we're going to narrow yeah. it down. The thing, and we yeah, ran and long and talked about what we're doing, so we did narrow it down, and we'll see what yeah. happens. And the thing is, we haven't even gotten the PlayStation 5 event, which by the time that you're listening to this has already happened. We don't know what's happened so far, but. Wait, wait, I'm going to make some guesses. Do it. Okay. All right. We're gonna have. Let's, let's we'll make guesses now that we're gonna edit out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> God of War three. Oh okay. Uh, God of War three. They're skipping two. They're going right to three. Uh huh. Go on. Um, it's gonna be priced at fifteen hundred dollars. That one might be accurate. And. They decided uh, to change the stick location. Oh no! They don't. And, want at to the last minute. That. Um. Comes with. I don't know. VR built in. There we go. Done. There's my predictions. All right. All right, I'll give perfect. you some reasonable predictions. We go don't see it. the box. Let's... We do not see the box. They do not announce a price. And we see Spider-Man 2. All right. So to the listener who who already knows everything that has happened during the stream because they're listening to this on Sunday, we're sorry for making you cringe on how wrong we are. But we're going to talk about the news we do know. I'm not nah, gonna do that. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, for, um, also, so, for anyone watching live, uh, some of us are gonna react live to that event that's happening that PlayStation's doing on Thursday. So yes. feel free to 
come back and hang out for that. Yes. Um, but so, to the news that we do know about, our first story is developers making Xbox Series X games will learn to address PS5's SSD advantage, says Xbox lead. This is from VG247 by Sheriff Sadid. Uh, and this is a really interesting idea because I there was a video I was actually watching about um, the PlayStation 5 SSD and the way that they're the way that they've constructed this thing um, is one of the best in class SSDs mm -hmm. that will provide this advantage to PlayStation especially first party developers to make load times be basically non existent. And I think that this is going to be providing a really interesting challenge for both. Though the Xbox Series X does have an SSD, one of the things that I think, and this is a little bit away from the story itself, but I think that I've got some, some thoughts on this. Uh, just as somebody who primarily plays a lot of their games on PC, PC for the longest time has been the front runner when it comes to technology that can be used in games. Now there's a very good chance PC might be the lowest common denominator. <laughs> Which is something that I never thought would ever happen, and I think just goes to show sort of what PlayStation is thinking next gen is going to be looking at. But what do you guys think of this article? Because there's some really interesting stuff from Microsoft's William Sitwell in this article that um, I think really shows how Xbox is planning to address this concern. But what do you guys think? Uh, I, one, I, one, one, I just want to state one thing. Uh, mm -hmm. William mm -hmm. Sitwell used to work for Xbox on backwards compatibility at cloud and the platform. He has moved on right. to work on their mixed reality products, things like HoloLens. So he's not directly right. affiliated with Xbox. So anything that he is saying is speculative, I'm sure just based on things he's heard around the office, but he's not okay. working directly on it, but it, Thank it's, you for still an, that up. it's still an interesting read into what Microsoft and Xbox are planning around ways to best utilize the technology. Sorry, AJ for cutting you off. Feel, uh, please no. go ahead. Yeah, no. Um, so you said that it, well, PC at at this point uh, when this does come out might become the lowest common denominator. But my ultimate question would be, for how long? How long until, you know? Well, my my thought with that is that is just because of the sort of ambiguous nature of what a PC can have inside of it. Yeah, that they're gonna have to. <laughs> Unless they're unless they take like an Apple style approach of just being like, and this is this is obviously going to go from developer to developer to developer. But unless they do an Apple style approach of like, you got to do this, we're we're doing this, and if you don't keep up with us, then too bad. Um, I don't see that happening. I see it being a we're going to have to cater to the largest amount of hardware that we can so that we can sell the units that we need. Where and I, I think that'll be the same. I think that'll be the same. I think that'll be the case when it comes to third-party games, just in general. Where I really do think, though, the SSD from PlayStation is really cool, and I'm super excited to see how developers implement it. I only, I really and truly only see the first party being the ones to yeah. properly utilize it. Yeah, I mean yeah. that that's sort of what I was going to say, and the fact that I think third-party games by and large will not see as big of a, a, a change or shift in the way that they're made or perform when it comes to next gen because you're having to cater to all three of these platforms being PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X. I think where you will see the, the most improvement will be from a first party pers perspective. I think mm -hmm. Microsoft's first party studios are gonna be able to best utilize the unique features of the Series X. And Sony's first parties are going to be the ones to best utilize the features of the PS5. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't wait to see what Naughty Dog does with no loading times. Insomniac, where is Spider-Man 2? <laughs> well, we will find out tomorrow, or we will have already found out by the time that you're listening to this. But I think from that, we can move on to our next story. Introducing crossplay to No Man's Sky, which is just a it's awesome that another game is getting crossplay, especially one like this. It's another step in No Man's Sky's redemption arc. Do you guys have any thoughts about this no, in general? No, or just No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is coming to uh, Xbox and I believe PC Game Pass tomorrow when this crossplay feature uh, comes out. So uh, if you I... have the opportunity to play it. Play I'm very excited about that now that I have VR as well. I was yes. going to say uh, there are new games coming to Game Pass tomorrow, including that. We also have uh, Battletech, a turn-based mech combat game, and Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2. 
uh, space-based RTS from the Warhammer universe uh, on PC and console game pass getting No Man's Sky Dungeon of the Endless a retro dungeon defense game as well as uh, Bard's Tale Remastered and re Remastered and Resnarkled I can't believe that's the name of a game coming on the 18th <laughs> as well as Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix and Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue are actually both mind, available. That's the dumb one. They're both available right now on Xbox Game Pass. So if you're interested in literally every Kingdom Hearts game, they're all there. Go play mm -hmm. them because they're great, even though they're titled weird. Sorry, um, back to No Man's Sky. Fair enough. Well, I mean, I think that's mostly it. Like, there's not too much to really say. Just this is a really cool thing. Yeah, they're doing this. So, just to talk on crossplay quickly, it's not on the list, but EA did their first crossplay game as well with Need for Speed Heat. Mm -hmm. um, Who's which, playing that? I have it. <laughs> you have it. I are wanted. You I wanted it? to play. I want to jump into it. It's like blue and pink, like Vice City, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a good it's outrun of aesthetic. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting to see EA trying it out, and Need for Speed was the first franchise they went with. I think we're going to see a lot more of that next gen. I, so. I hope so as well. Um, speaking of games that I'm going to skip the the third story just because we've been running a little bit long. I'll just yep. quickly I'll just quickly sum it up. Xbox uh, ba uh, demands racist influencer disassoci disassociate from its brand. Great. I'm glad my I'm glad that these companies are starting to really hopefully like take a stand and let's hope that they continue doing so. Not while um, not when it's prevalent in the media right now. Don't but, use humor as an excuse to make fun of minorities and people of color and exactly transgender that. people and so on and so forth. Be yeah. actually funny. Yeah. Don't be, 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 be good to each dick. other. Yes. Uh, but speaking of games that have talked about potentially doing crossplay in some way, shape, or form, Destiny 2 has basically laid out their next three years... And so this story coming from gamesindustry.biz from Rebecca Valentine. Destiny 2 is doing a lot of really cool stuff. I just familiarized myself with their uh, press conference that they did on uh, Tuesday. Yeah. And, oh, I'm getting really excited about playing Destiny again. Um, I, um, what do you guys think about everything that has happened? So, like, I've played maybe a sum total of 30 hours of Destiny 2. And I've, like, barely scratched the surface of it, and ultimately I just kind of stopped playing it because it wasn't grabbing me. And I gotta say, I watched this press conference, and I'm like, I still don't see myself 100% coming back to Destiny 2, but this was a really well-done press conference, and I agree with and like their approach to the sheer bevy of content they, ha they have in Destiny 2, and how they've decided, you know what, we're just gonna rotate content in and out to make it more manageable to old and new players alike. This is a great conference, and I'm excited about the game's future, even if I might never play it again. Yeah, I, I'm i just... Some of the stuff that they've been talking about, specifically one of the big things in this article that they were... that uh, people have highlighted is the fact that they're sticking with Destiny 2, and they're not making a new game, which was part of the reason why Bungie and Activision made their split was because... Activision loves the annual releases, then you can see that with games like Call of Duty, where in this case, they're like their Bungie wants to stick with one game, and they talked about that a lot, of like, they they didn't if, I feel like if they could have, they wouldn't have made Destiny 2, they would have just stuck with the, the first game, and just added everything that they added into 2 into that game, and so they're bringing content from the first game into Destiny 2 and I'm I'm just so happy that Bungie seems to be thriving because they're they're a company that I they're they're a developer that I always want to root for, um, not just because of their their legacy with Halo, but I just think Destiny is, it's the definitive games as a service game right now. Um, I guess besides Fortnite, but I would say Destiny Two is is doing really cool things, and I can't wait for Beyond the Light. I've already pre-ordered it. I'm gonna definitely grab that when that comes out. If you guys just... have any, go ahead. Sorry, I know I, I talked previously. Uh, I do want to just also quickly say, they also mentioned how they're going to be incorporating old Destiny 1 content into this game. Yeah. And again, like, don't know if I'll ever come back to this game, but if I do, it's good to know that all the Destiny content from throughout all the years since the franchise have start, has started will be in one place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I love that they've also taken 
they're they're doing a one the last sort of thing I'll, I'll mention about it is they're doing like a almost a disney style vault system where they're going to take legacy content right. and they're going to take content that's not being played right now in destiny 2 and they're going to remove it from the game for for a while uh just to try to get the because the game is getting close to like a hundred something gigabytes and it's going to only keep growing as the game itself is growing and adding more content and so they're going to start removing some of the things to try like some of the least played stuff that their player base who who have because at this point it's only the the most dedicated people who are going to be playing stuff and so they're removing stuff but then they're also going to start bringing stuff in from the original destiny and they're going to just have a constantly shifting amount of content which i think will continue to have longevity for just the game in itself. So I guess from that we can. Oh, um, yeah. From that we can move on to read slash watch all of the things. So the <laughs> first one on our list is something from AJ. I know you've been busy with what's been happening in our Twitch chat. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what if what? Ignore did the you chat. Want to, what did this you is want this to is tell? an audio show. What did you, uh, okay? We'll no. bring it up again. <laughs> we'll leave. But you know what? We'll what? leave it to the editor to decide what he wants to do with that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, what a schmuck that guy is. Oh my god. Anyway, hashtag Black Lives Matter. Um, so yesterday, uh, well, on Monday I started, and yesterday I finished the fourth season of uh, Thirteen Reasons Why, um, the Netflix show. Uh, you as not a, a fan. you I'm as a film a student show, and somebody very close to high school may uh, may not like it as much, but I actually really appreciate it. The first season, I respect your opinion. <laughs> the first season came out at a time uh, where I had a lot of very uh, dark feelings, and it was very cathartic for me to experience those uh, through the show. Uh, to feel like somebody understood. Um, anyway, they're up to the fourth season now, and uh, I actually, um, I, I actually really enjoyed it. It's uh, there, there, there's one episode in particular that is very topical and relevant to the uh, goings on in the world uh, of over the last two weeks. Uh, they did not plan that in advance because this show was made uh, last year at some point. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, uh, I, I really enjoyed it, and I think you should, uh, give it a, give, give the show a, a second chance, if you will, Alex. I, I don't think I'm gonna do that, but I appreciate at least, uh, your honesty for it. Right. Mitch, you have some things on the read all the things. I'm sorry, I just don't have time to watch TV. I'm too busy in Persona. That's fair. I was gonna say, yeah, you don't have any time. Video games take up a lot of it. Uh, so yes. something I wanted to talk a little bit about, or at least have people go and read, is a very interesting op-ed piece from Mark Lloyd, who is a 12-year veteran uh, as the head of studio for Rockstar Lincoln, who came up a lot in the news last year when we talked about the crunch that went on at Rockstar around the release of Red Dead 2 and GTA 5 and, and those sorts of things. But he wrote a really interesting op-ed piece for GamesIndustry.biz about how remote work culture is going to have a negative impact when it comes to dealing with crunch and this isn't something specific to the games industry this is something a lot of us are, are feeling right now just in our day to day of we're working from home we're living where we work and work is sort of blending together with everyday life and no longer being able to separate the two is becoming a really interesting mental health concern for a lot of employers who are you know trying to take better care of their employees who are now having to work remotely and it is very much a culture shift for a lot of businesses and a lot of workplaces and we as a society need to do a better job of understanding yes i work from home but i'm being paid from nine to five there may be some extenuating circumstances but if you want me on a call at 10 30 p.m that's not going to happen because i need to have my own there needs to be a balance there and a really interesting story from someone very close to a lot of crunch culture uh, that being Mark Lloyd. So if you want to head over to gamesindustry.biz, give that a give that a read. It's remote work raises new crunch concerns. An opinion piece by Mark Lloyd. Mm -hmm. I was going to say Mark Lloyd apparently has worked for a long time at Rockstar Lincoln, which is I I, I think kind of discussed as being like one of the worst places to work at at Rockstar because that's where a lot of the quality assurance work is done. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like yeah, mm -hmm. 
I mean, kudos to him for going through with that and playing a part in the creation of some fantastic games. But yeah, definitely, he, he's probably injured a real rough time. Yeah. But, I mean, it is nice to see that Rockstar hopefully are going to be taking steps to, right. to be doing that with him uh, with him being the one to give this. Hopefully that means that we might be seeing changes from them. That being said, he's no longer at Rockstar. Oh, okay. Sorry. I miss. <laughs> I miss. I, 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 didn't, I didn't mention that. Yeah. Uh, he he yeah, okay. left Rockstar a few years ago and is working on some other okay. stuff now. So it's not necessarily the, the culture shift is going to happen there because of what he's written. But it's good that they're are people good, in the industry yeah. and not vocally speaking out over over these things yes let's normalize it when we can or how we if we can so from with that there's one more thing on the the watch all the things this is going to be very quick uh it's not exactly new it it the reason it's in the watch all the things is because i think the trailer is really cool uh halo has announced that firefight is coming to halo 3 odst odst had the best firefight I'm surprised it wasn't in the game when they brought it to MCC. I just think this is really cool. And the trailer that they released is very emblematic of the first Halo 3 ODSD trailer. Back when I think it was called Halo 3 Recon. So. Oh my god, think... you just blew my mind. I forgot about that. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, so <laughs> it's a really cool trailer. And I'm so glad Firefight's back and <clears throat> there's going to be back in ODSD. Because Firefight and ODSD was uh, the best version of that game mode. I have some idea of what halo is from the mm -hmm. years of seeing people talk about it online i don't know what this is so firefight was during that time when after gears of war 2 came out horde, and mode. horde mode became a thing every game was implementing uh... that in their own games and so halo had their own version called firefight where you had a set number of lives and you just had to hold off until i think it was like and then you had to hold off a certain number of rounds and you just kind of kept going until you all died and it would get progressively harder and harder because they turn on like challenge modifiers like the, the only skulls way you can get health the halo skulls. yeah the skulls so like the only way you can get health back is if you do melee or you lose your um your uh motion sensor or like things like that that slowly start to add difficulty to the to the uh, process until you just die and Halo 3 ODST had the best version because you, got, you weren't as Spartan and it didn't feel like score chasing. So I'm really glad that's coming back. But that's kind of all I needed to say about that. So with that, we're going to talk about some deals because this week has been crazy. And I'm going to I'm going to throw this off to you guys. Uh, Cozy, you have one on the, on the list first. So please yes. tell us about your deal. So, uh, over the past week, uh, Itch.io, a video game website where typically like indie games are published, uh, posted an insane deal uh, where people could contribute a small amount of money to a charitable cause and get their hands on 700 games. And over the past few days, that has now risen to over 1,300 games. I, like, I just... If five dollars is so valuable to you, just resolve not to have a Quizno sub sometime <laughs> this week and get this bundle. Not yeah. all these games have the same level of polish as each other, uh, but I do want to emphasize that word polish because I'm certain that there will, you'll find plenty of games in this collection that, even without that same level of polish, have a decent level of quality to them that have some innovative little ideas that have something in them that make the percentage of a percentage of a penny that you spent on them worthwhile yeah i i just want to say a couple of things why did you think quiznos because that came up earlier carmen and i were talking about oh god we really wish there was a quiznos around here but they are not easy to come by these days in canada y you, know you know what you know what it was why i said quiznos M many years ago on podcast beyond uh somebody came on to talk about Crunchyroll, and he used the exact same fast food place he's like hey you know if five dollars is too much for you just don't buy a quizno sub and subscribe to country roll and for whatever reason that example is always stuck in my mind fair enough uh, i am um, i sorry go yeah. ahead, alex no or aj uh I, yeah. I have one more thing to say in that celeste is in this bundle if you can't spend five dollars mm -hmm. to get celeste you're an idiot it's one of the best games <laughs> yeah. of all time go buy this bundle just for that i'm not a pc guy i'm still probably going to pick it up just to have celeste in another place that game is really freaking good I, um... There's also um, a bunch of other games in it as well that are pretty well known. Uh, there's Gunhouse. Uh, there's A Night in the Woods. There's a uh, yeah. There are a lot. Like make no mistake, there are a lot of games in here that are like I've never heard of this before. But there are more than enough worthwhile experiences that you have heard of before to 
make this more than essential. So yeah, I, I, I paid 30 bucks for it today. Um, there's about five days left. Um, so probably by the time this episode goes up on Sunday, um, the, the sale might be over. I, I don't know how time works anymore. Um, but I think also a couple of days there, but you're right. It does. End yeah. Work pretty soon. Yeah. Um, but also I noticed, uh, and the reason I bought it today is cause I forgot about it earlier, but I, I re was reminded by, a. A uh, friend of kind of funny Belinda Garcia at BBC Garcia on Twitter. She, um, if you make a charitable donation to at any anywhere in like recently, like in the in the last day or two, she said for the first ten of you that uh, reply to her with proof uh, or DM her or whatever, um, she's gonna just buy this thing for you. Um, I don't nope. I don't know if she's actually uh, done this, but yeah, uh, it's. It, it's it's spread the love hashtag black li black life lives matter yes they do yes so mitch you have a whole lot of yeah. stuff that's on your your deal list so please fill us in uh there's a crazy good sale right now on the switch something over like there's more like more than 700 games on sale or something along those lines right now some games you never mm -hmm. see go on sale some first party stuff from nintendo uh, New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. It's $56 in Canada. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, same price, same deal. Doesn't go on sale very often. The one game I picked up that I'm really excited about because I love card games and I love R mixing it with RTS and RPG elements and things like that is Slay the Spire. It's about 22 bucks in Canada. Uh, there's a ton of really good stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff I've picked up in previous sales, so go pick it up if you're interested. I see Nathan, you're adding something that's probably from that sale to the dock. Yeah, what is that? Oh, that's for me. Uh, <laughs> if you guys ever played, um, oh, I'm gonna screw up the name. Uh, Bit Runner presents um, a Runner to the Legend of Alien Rhythm. I think I've screwed that name up. Uh, its sequel came out on Switch. One of the first Switch launched. Uh, one of the first Switch titles, Runner Three. Um, it's normally twenty two ninety nine. It's a buck sixty Canadian. Yeah, pick that up. Wow. Uh, another yeah. one. An another one that came up in the chat that I've talked about in. Uh, on a number of occasions is katana zeros on sale again it's so good it's one of my favorite games it is go pick yeah, it up it's really Zero. really good um and then to move on to the next sale or the next deal that i found if you buy certain movies through the microsoft store you get sonic mania for free uh Ooh. which is really cool yeah why uh, would you do that to yourself because sonic why mania is the sonic only game? good sonic game oh okay fair enough uh but you can pick up a movie like it's pick up nerd geeky like nerd kind of culture movies or video game movies so you can pick up something like sonic the hedgehog the movie which was bizarrely good uh detective pikachu shazam harry potter dark knight matrix a lot of these are on sale right now as well through the microsoft store and you, so you can get the movies on sale get the game for free it's really awesome and finally best buy canada has announced their play at best buy event that will last the entire summer in terms of having new games up for pre-order, deals on games, deals on pre-orders, which I'm really excited about because I always pre-order all my games around E3 and now E3 isn't happening, uh, as well as some contests and things. So check out Best Buy's blog or bestbuy.ca, uh, Best Buy on Twitter from the Canadian perspective at least, uh, and check out what they're promoting and dealing over the course of the entire summer. Uh, thank you for that. And I think with that, we can move on finally to our topic of the show. And this topic is one that I think is very important right now, especially with the way the state of the world is. And there's a lot of bad things that are happening. And with that, you and everyone wants to stay informed with social media. But then, you know, it's the, it's the balance of trying to stay informed while also trying to take care of your own mental health. And... I, I know in times of great, great hardship, I turn, me personally, I turn to games uh, to deal with that. And I think right now is a great example of a time where games can really be important. But I wanted to talk about um, what when have there been moments in your life where a game has, you've played the, the perfect storm of, playing a game the right place right time and it just has gotten you through that tough time i wanted to bring this up because this is a very important i made a whole video about one of those games for myself 
uh, which was Breath of the Wild. And I just wanted to hear about that from you guys. So what have you guys got? I'll talk about mine a little bit later, but let's, I want to hear from you guys first. <laughs> All right. Not All right. I can, go, I can go first if no one has any. I wanted to do mine um, closer to the end because it kind of ties into yours, Alex. It'll give you a good segue. So just leave me to the end. I'm going to grab some more water. Okay. Right. So I, I'm a pretty privileged person. I haven't had many like huge issues in my life where I've needed like a tough time, but I find whenever like I'm feeling down or I'm struggling or mentally, um, I'm not like I'm having trouble. I always find myself dumping a lot of time into lawn JRPGs mm. just as like comfort food. Um, they're not necessarily like, don't get me wrong. They're not the most skill based, but just like the grinding and the repetition and knowing you're getting somewhere. Like when I mm -hmm. grind in an RPG, I know like, it's not a waste of time because I'm always gaining experience and like I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it. But it's just something calming and soothing about that. And even when you look at something like Persona 4 Golden, um, where when I played that, that was back in 2012. Yeah, it would have been 2012. Yeah, uh, 2012 when it dropped on the Vita. Um, I had a lot, of t a lot of fun with that, but i had a new son at the time like i was balancing a lot of things and it's just like a lot more my life had changed significantly not necessarily in a negative way but in a different like my life was different hmm. it was forever different it was getting used to that um so also you should play persona 4 golden if you haven't because it's excellent i hope it'll be available on something other than the vita <laughs> oh. fingers Wait crossed who can 13th. imagine who can imagine <laughs> fingers crossed with that one so, uh, yeah, like, I think that's perfectly, like, that's perfectly, like, having those, those, t I've been dealing with that a lot lately of just, like, this kind of, the repetition of the way the world is right now and just kind of, like, I feel like I'm in a, a fucked up version of Groundhog Day where the day is essentially the same. And having, because I, I went from playing, I went from playing Fire Emblem Three Houses to immediately into Persona 5, and both of those games kind of have similar structure in the sense that it's month based and you like do yeah. stuff on the you do you're kind of you're progressing through the year and it's been very comforting to know like it's like once you kind of understand the core mechanics of those games you kind of know what you're doing and you just kind of it like expands from there and i've been really appreciating having that sort of sense of structure in a time where there is none so i i perfect i fully know what you mean by that mm-hmm So, anyone else got one? Uh, I mean, I figure I might as well jump in right here, Please. considering uh, that Nathan brought up Persona 4, because Persona 4 Golden was actually going to be the game that I was going to bring up as well. Um, so, for me, uh, this game came into my life at a slightly different time. I believe that I was in the intermediary period between me leaving Seja and me going into university proper. And to be honest, it was a period of time where there weren't really a whole lot of friends in my life. Um, like a lot of the people that I had made friends with at Seja, they just like, they weren't very good at kind of, kind of keeping touch uh, <laughs> with me. And likewise, I don't necessarily know that I was very good at keeping in touch with them, but in any case, I was just feeling very kind of lonely. And I feel like this game was the exact remedy that I needed. It gave me a group of friends that I could kind of care for and form bonds with. And I just got, I mean, I would have been engrossed in that game, even if I wasn't in the mental state that I was when I first played it. But that definitely contributed to this game being such a memorable experience for me and also such a therapeutic experience can i just ask one thing cozy yeah for those of us un <clears throat> sorry i you almost saw me choke on camera on a cheese stick um for those of us not familiar with the quebec education system what is sage uh i don't remember what, what like it's an anagram like, for, like high school but... like grades 9 through 12 it, it... or it, it, no, it's it's between high school and university. Oh. Is it like the old OAC that I had to go through, like the Ontario Academic Credits? Probably. That were like 13? <laughs> in any case, had... it's 
I mean, it's basically, I guess you could say it's grade 12 and 13 of high school, but it's more akin to university in terms of overall feel. It's it's like a community college versus, I don't know, but... Yeah, that's a that's another good com point of comparison. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's about all I have to say there. I, man, I played a lot of this game way back in the day. What a great, fantastic little uh, just sort of therapy. Mm -hmm. oh, I love that. Game. I wanted to I wanted to bring up uh, Private Jeebus in the chat uh, has one uh, for for me, and this is me reading what he wrote. For me, it's Assassin's Creed. During one of the hardest times of my life, it, the only thing that brought me joy was AC. It's something I look forward to every year, and it eased me. That's why I got it. The, that's why I got the logo tattooed on my body, which I think is really cool. Um, just kind of having say, that. I was just gonna say, did he say which Assassin's Creed? Um, no, it just says Assassin's Creed. Um, just the franchise. Tell us where the it's, tattoo it's, is. He and I have talked about that offline. It is more just the series as a whole, not any individual mm. game. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I just I I think that's <clears throat> really cool in the sense that like he got the 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 logo tattooed because then it's kind of that forever reminder of even if the franchise falls out of relevance, um, it will always kind of remind of this like really important moment for him. And I I that's I'm very much in that sort of boat of like being very sort of wanting to I, I don't know how i'm trying to think about what i'm saying <laughs> i don't know i'm very like i'm very like nostalgic i guess for the things that have brought me a lot of joy in my life like I we do have a tattoo update is cool <clears throat> sorry mm -hmm. we have a tattoo update it is on the right forearm mm. so there you mm -hmm. go yes plus the assassin's creed logo is just really cool so getting that tattooed is actually yeah it's it's a bad. good it's a good logo Mm -hmm. yeah it's not super blatant either yeah i um so man i am struggling to think of like for for me personally like a game that got me through like a, ru a rough time like if i think of like when i think back to when when i was a kid and i like was definitely not thinking about that sort of thing my parents got divorced when i was seven and then I just that's around the time like shortly after that when Pokemon came out and being a, a young child with uh, freshly divorced parents and everything you know I, I found escape wherever I could and you know I played through Pokemon Blue like I could get through the rock tunnel uh, without needing Flash I just ignored Flash altogether you know the, the, whole, the whole thing um and then at some point, I remember discovering uh, Zelda, finally, and getting way into that. And, like, I loved the dark themes of Majora's Mask and and everything. Um, the, yeah, it, like, more recently, like, it, I don't know, like, I, I just have a hard time committing fully to like the closest i got recently was animal crossing now i know for all of us at the start of the pandemic like animal crossing came out at the right time right so that's probably the the closest and most recent one um but then i fell off that real quick and so yeah late lately for me it's just been kind of hard to like pick pick up a game and just like hey i'm gonna use this to unwind like nothing's really hooked me for like that that nice like eight hour binge that my soul craves every once in a while and i'm not sure why hmm. maybe there's just been too much other other stuff to think about right now yeah that's know. that's yeah I, I get that and i think it was kind of at the beginning of the the pandemic it was a little bit easier to just kind of like especially when animal crossing came out it was a little bit easier to just kind of invest yourself super heavily into <clears throat> one thing where now because this has been going on for so long, there's this little bit more normalcy to it. It's not as just out there. Um, it's not as much of like this intrusion into our lives anymore where it's now we have to figure out a way to live with mm -hmm. what's going on. So I, I get what you mean by that. Of like, it's harder to just like focus on the one thing now. Yeah. 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 Um, so I guess I've, so I'll go because mine kind of, oh yeah, Mitch, go ahead. No, I can just, I can, 
quickly go into mine just because I know it's going to yeah, okay. probably t end up tying into yours. Um, okay. So the one I can, I mean, I don't remember any specific game from my childhood, but I did grow up and was very, very much bullied as a kid, mostly over my weight and my intelligence. So being, you know, one of those kids that was really good in school, I was a pretty easy target when it came to bullying. And it was something that really affected my mental health when I was younger and games gave me a great escape from that when I was a kid in terms of not having to really... I mean, I probably should have dealt with a lot more of those issues when I was younger, but games gave me a way to escape that and just, you know, continue to be in the space that I was knowing. Eventually things would get better. Now, luckily, I have really great friends and you guys and, and other friends that I've made over the years. And I don't... It still affects me in terms of being bullied the way I was, but I am doing a better job of not letting those feelings crop back up or letting it get to me as much as it used to when the old homeless guy in the mall calls me a fatty and it's awful and I do need to do something about my health but I can sort of brush those comments off a bit more now than I could when I was younger but the one that stands out to me from recent years actually it wasn't a, a, so much a trying time as it was a very very busy time with some difficult elements to it uh, the Nintendo Switch released in North America on March 3rd, 2000, or 2017. Uh, almost a month to the day after that, uh, on April 4th of that same year, Carmen, my fiance, ha underwent some elective surgery. So we spent a lot of time going to medical appointments in that month leading up to it, as well as the day of spending the entire day at the hospital with her. Um, and having the Switch with me in those times was really good. And then one month from that, on May the 4th, 2017, and I'll never forget the date, is the <laughs> day I received the keys to my condo. The first time I'd ever moved away from home, the first time ever being on my own, first time as a homeowner, and just all of that happening in sort of this weird time capsule two-month window, really having the Switch at that time and only owning Breath of the Wild and Fast RMX which was a launch title for the Switch. It was sort of like a, a futuristic, F -Zero. yeah, F-Zero wipeout style racer. It's a really hard game. That's a game um, that needs to come back, F-Zero. Yeah, for sure. But so having the Switch with me and dealing with, you know, have, uh, choosing to go with Carmen to a lot of these appointments and being there on the day of the surgery as well. I mean, it wasn't, it, there, there was nothing life-threatening about it. It was more of a quality of life thing and she there was very little risk but even still you never know and just having something to escape to is vast and as open as as breath of the wild when i was stuck inside for a lot of these things was really good to have and then also moving out for the first time and the the fear and the anxiety and the the oh did i remember to do this or that or did i forget something of my parents or did i lock the door at night because i've never really before moving out i never i never had a room with a door that locked <laughs> uh, I, I yeah. slept in the I, I lived primarily the last few years at my parents in their rec room without a door just a bed in the basement with nothing so it was the first time I really had my own space because when I was younger before moving into the basement I shared a room with my young my uh, younger sister hmm. so I, I never really experienced that until I had my own place and some of those anxieties creeping in for the first time and, and having something like the switch that before I got internet at the apartment or moved everything in, the switch was there. It was the last thing I packed up at home. It was the first thing I unpacked when I got there because it gave me something to do, something to escape with. And I really appreciated having it at, like that was like the perfect time for me for the switch to come out because I had a month and then I was in the hospital with Carmen and then I had a month and then I moved out. And it was just a crazy, crazy couple of months and, and having the switch really helped with mm. alleviating all of the stress and anxiety around both of those major life events. Mm. Hmm. And I figured me talking about Breath of the Wild would lead re <laughs> right into what you're going to talk about, Alex, so I figured it sets you up. Yeah, so, so yeah, um, my, for sure, like, the, I, I use games as an escapism all the time, um, especially growing up. I was very bad at making friends, which apparently is not a as much of a concern now even though i still deem that i'm very not good at it um uh, people others would say otherwise but regardless of that i used games like halo and i remember like if i was very like if i was very tense about like something at like school or whatever i would play i remember it was saints row 2 i would use that to let loose and just like 
I just go wreak havoc in an open world. But regardless, like I've, that's always been a thing that I've done. But there's a, there's a couple of games in this. So what I'm alleviating to is in 2017, right? Uh, December, I don't remember what the day was, whatever. Um, I was diagnosed with leukemia and it was like very rapid. Like as soon as I found out, like, because I was like essentially, I couldn't breathe. There was a certain point and it like, there was, it, it all escalated very quickly. And there was a point where I was just in the hospital um, where I was kind of like, they didn't, even though I was fine and was going to start chemotherapy, they wanted to keep me there to like, no, if I had to have like uh because I had a biopsy and they kept me there so it's like I could just get I get pushed to the front of the line because I was already inpatient when you're inpatient it's a lot easier to get stuff done because you don't have to go through setting up appointments and stuff um and so during that time I was away from all of the things that I had my computer and everything and like and so I got a switch i remember i had like mentioned it offhandedly of like this would be a cool thing i've heard breath of the wild's a very good game and then uh when it was kind of like okay you need to like go to the hospital and at least like stay the nights there i got breath of the wild um well i got mario odyssey and breath of the wild at the same time and i decided to play mario odyssey first and these games very much go hand in hand in in the experience because it was amazing like besides the fact that they are phenomenal games like both of them even though i have my problems with breath of the wild i think that game is so special in what it does well um and i think mario odyssey as well i i there's so much about and i made a people we, we mentioned it before i think i did as well that i made a video about breath of the wild and why it kind of like a better more in-depth detail of the story of leading up to it and what it meant to me um yeah so there's like a whole bunch of things like just the thematics of in breath of the wild your one objective of that game is beat ganon and what you have to do to that is you have to build up the strength by the collecting the hearts by going through the shrines and getting the weapons and understanding all the systems of that game to be able to beat ganon that's what I was doing in real life to some extent. It's a very lame comparison, thinking about it. Like, it's very, like, corny or whatever. But, like, it was. I was building up the strength to overcome this really great challenge that I was going through in my life. Because this was... This is the... the. It's been one of those defining moments for me of going through that whole thing. And I... <laughs> um, Breath of the Wild was the thing that got me through the... the 20 because i was supposed to be in the hospital for 30 days i um i was supposed to be in the hospital for 30 days i got through it in 21 uh because i reacted so positively to it speed run and i wouldn't yeah <laughs> man nailed it um but uh breath of the wild was like the thing that got me through that time with that and mario odyssey because i played just mm -hmm. almost exclusively um yeah and then afterwards there was a really long time because I was going through dealing with it for two years. And so having the Switch by me, by my side, helped with that. But there's a couple of other games that I wanted to talk about during this time from like the next, throughout the next year in 2018 was dedicated almost solely to dealing with this, this, um, this, uh, this time. Uh, and during that time, I got. I, uh, in September of 2018 because I was mostly just like I was too sick to play on my computer which was where I played all of my games I couldn't sit at my desk I had to be like either on a couch or in my bed because I couldn't I just was too sick for, for a really long time and when Marvel Spider-Man came out I got the PS4 and that was another that was another game that like meant so much to me at the time because it was when i was in the midst of this really difficult i'm gonna keep going on and on by the way keep doing it um, keep going <laughs> i i, I um, said this in the chat and i'm gonna say it here i'm so proud that you're telling the story now and i love it and yeah. i'm so glad that you have this story to tell because otherwise we may not have this show uh and yeah. i wouldn't have one of my best friends so i want uh, you to just take the floor this is your time and i'm so happy to okay. to hear you talking about okay. this in such a positive this, way yeah, this, this topic really means a lot to me, um, just because I, yeah, I would have gotten through this time, but it was a lot of ways, and 
there's a quote from Troy Baker that he he talks about a lot um, that he said a lot about what people tell him when they talk to him about like The Last of Us or Bioshock or any of the number of games that he's been in. And he's he mentions how they say like, oh, I got inspired to overcome whatever I was going through because Joel, if Joel could go through what he did in The Last of Us or if Booker could do what he did in The Last of Us, then I could do that too. And there's a lot that I, um, I think about that a lot of like, if Spider-Man could do it, then I could do it. And having Marvel Spider-Man at the time was great. And then I played God of War and God of War was another one that was like going, my, my entire connection to the PS4 really came from that time because that's when I got my PS4. That's when I played Spider-Man. I played, um, I played God of War. I played Horizon. I played all of these games about overcoming these great challenges when I was going through this immense challenge myself and i've posted pictures about like i as part of like i reacted positively to the medication but i also just like kind of let myself go in every other aspect because it was i was trying to focus on healing one way where everything else was kind of left to the background and i took it on myself to really try like i've, I've taken great liberties in in just progressing myself better just in every way that i can socially physically and i i don't i relate so much to it because of these games i beat sekiro during this time while i was going through this hard uh, this hard time there's so many things there's so many games that i've played during this time that i could just continuously talk about but just hey guys video games are cool i like them a lot and they mean <laughs> a lot to me and um yeah i i i honestly like i don't know if i would have had like the if i didn't have this motivation from everything that i was doing at that time i wouldn't have gone to the cne i wouldn't have met cozy i wouldn't have met mitch and then from there i don't know if i would have gone to like i i wouldn't have met kind of funny um because they were another thing that helped me get through this time and then um I wouldn't have gone to EGLX. I probably wouldn't have met any of you then at that point. And then I, we wouldn't have, uh, well, you guys might've started this podcast, but I wouldn't have been a part of it. And so there's so much that I can relate back to that time. And I feel like I could kind of keep going and going and going, but I'm going to stop talking now because I, there's so much more I could say, but I feel like I've said the, the, the important stuff. And thank you for letting me have this platform to keep talking. Yeah, I, I just want to say, we we all have a series of events that led up to this happening and us coming together as a group and just you know connecting over something we all love i mean i i end up going back and relating it back to my fiance who kicked me in the butt to go out for you it's it's your cancer story and everyone has that one thing that they're gonna look back on is like this was the moment that you know pushed me out of my comfort zone made me be the the best version of myself or the version of myself that i wanted to put in front of the world and it's just it's great to hear those stories yeah and i think right now this is a time where having stuff like that um really has been the thing like thinking back on a lot of, a lot of this i I'm so glad I have these stories. I, I wouldn't want to, if I had the choice, I wouldn't have wanted to go through it in the first place, but I'm, I'm glad that if I was forced to, then I got like this out of it. And I, there's so much, there's so much positive that came in spite of that, like this podcast, which genuinely, it might seem like a trivial thing of just like, oh, we get together and talk about video games once a week. But like, especially right now with, not being able to see anyone who I had formed a connection with in at, with at school, um, I'm not. I, I'm might be able to see them in September. I don't know, but it's nice to have something to be able to have a connection again with people, and I, I really appreciate that. And I think that's kind of the the long and short of it. Is I just. I, I'm glad that we have this platform to, to keep talking. Me yeah. too. Uh, so, something you said that strikes a chord with me, and it's something I, I think it's the right way to maybe end the show and, and this topic. Uh, you talked about how these games brought you joy in a time of such sorrow, uh, regardless of when it happened. Let's. Well, I think we should just go around the Discord 
the video, the chat, the the Twitch, the audio, the the room, the virtual room we all share. The universe, the multiverse. And just just talk about one thing that's brought us joy. It doesn't have to have been at, in a time that you were at your lowest, but just let's let's end things on a, a joyous note. Okay. Anyone want to go first? Uh, my sister actually brought me a banh mi sandwich while we were recording this episode. <laughs> and it's the first time that she's ever done so. So, there we go. Wow. I meant games, but sandwiches are good, too. Yeah. Sandwich game. Yeah. Always always got that sandwich game on point. I mean, I can I can start then if, if no one else wants to really go for it. it. But I remember yeah. distinctly receiving my ps1 on christmas and the only um uh, le legitimate game that santa delivered with it was the neversoft spider-man i know i'm going back to spider-man but like just hear me out hear me out like the, the the idea of getting a new console on christmas with new games to experience new 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 worlds to explore and having that neversoft spider-man game just I was the hap one of the happiest memories I have is that Christmas of getting that gift and just playing the ever loving chagrin out of that Spider-Man game and exploring New York and it just it, it thinking back on it now it just makes me happy to think about that game. Hmm. Uh, for me, I guess it goes back to like the happiness was so I had a Nintendo when I was a kid. I got a paper out when I was eight and. Um, I bought my Nintendo with my paper out money from when I was eight. Uh, we talked a bit about that in the one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but my parents told me they weren't going to buy me a Super Nintendo. Like, I had a Nintendo, that was it, and I'm done. Oh, God. Um, because they didn't quite understand games and how the systems worked. Uh, because it was still very new at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, but as part of the newspaper route, you got... Uh, the, we had a contest called, um, I don't know, something in a can. But basically, more new subscribers you got, you'd get cans delivered to you and they had prizes in them and i happened to pick the prize out that was the super nintendo wow wow mm. um and then my parents were like i don't think we're ever gonna be able to get them get him away from this and i'm like no probably not and <laughs> as i'm uh, 38 turning 39 they are probably correct <laughs> so uh um yeah the into what what brings me joy when I play a game in general? I think when I look back, one of the the font like the fondest times was for me in high school where I didn't have any like other real responsibilities other than my part time job making pizza and actually having to. I didn't care about school at the time, which, you know, as as ha happens to all of us, uh, you know, we kind of regret not caring enough about certain things. For me, I kind of wish I cared a little bit more about school. Um, I mean, speak for yourself. I said earlier, I was a nerd through and through. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, the thing that during high school, especially uh, in my grade 12 year, that brought me the most joy was probably the release of Halo 3. Um, and I remember, you know, th there there were so many, like, Friday nights where me and uh, a friend or two would uh, just be in my living room, just, just playing the multiplayer, uh, blaring music until 3 in the morning. Um, m honestly, at one point, it became... 100% uh, the Rocket Race playlist in Halo 3, um, which, uh, so it's, just to give you, to summarize what that game mode was, uh, you played only on the biggest Halo maps, and you and your partner were basic, were invincible, along with uh, the three, three, four other teams that were playing, three other teams. And it, it was basically, almost like a, it, you were, you were having a race. Uh, points would spawn on the map, and you would have to race there. Uh, so you you get... what One person drives this two-seater uh, ATV, the Mongoose, 
and the other person has a rocket launcher on the back and you as you're driving around the map going off jumps and doing whatever you the person in the back is your gunner and they have to try and not kill the other players but just blow them out of the way so they can't get to the checkpoint before you do and me and my uh, friend kenny used to have so much fun just going crazy in rocket race i don't know if you remember rocket race alex but uh I do. yeah it, it was such a good time uh yeah i, re I remember that super fondly <laughs> oh man i've been i've been tr i've been really trying to think about like if um sort of that one moment and i think i will because there's so many um i think i think it was cozy how far are you in god of war i know you were playing it uh recently. most recently i completed a side quest for sindri after uh escaping alfheim okay um i'm trying to remember oh okay so you're not you're not, not super far either. yeah 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 sorry okay. um there's a point in in there's a point in god of war i'm not going to spoil it um there's a point in god of war where kratos has to it it, it really he reveals has to the, do the thing with the thing to, he has to he has speak to the guy <laughs> He he has to uh, acknowledge his past, uh -huh. and I loved that moment. And that moment, I think, is one of the coolest moments in any game story um, that I can remember. Did and it it filled me with a lot of it filled me with a lot of emotions of like of like get it of imp of self improvement. And I I think back to that a lot of like this is like self-improvement's hard but you you don't want to ignore your own past but you also want to acknowledge that you're that you've progressed it i don't know i i love that moment in the story and i think it's something that i just want to 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 highlight as it brings me great joy when games do something cool with their story you you just reminded me of uh my first time playing uh pokemon gold and silver and i was 10 or 11 when that came out 2000 so i was with march of 2000 i think so i would have been 10 um when it, it specifically you said when you know acknowledges the past i had no idea that the entirety of the first map of pokemon red blue and yellow was going to be in that game in golden silver and that absolutely blew my mind. And that that moment also brought me a lot of joy. Being, oh my god, I can go, I can go to the old place. Oh, I can do the, holy crap! It, it was mind blowing back then, for sure. Hmm. Pokemon's got to okay. do that again. I would I would die if they did that again. I'm like, oh yeah, here, just go back to an older region in the same game that you had no idea about. Yeah. But knowing the internet, we'd all know about it six months before it actually happened. Yeah. So. uh with that i think we can sort of end uh, end the show off um so we i don't know if we have another topic of this of the for what we're doing next week it says on the dock that we're going to touch each other's butts Ooh. we're not going to do that Ooh, we to, we, i'm we into that to, we have to wait, socially wait. distance let let's not turn that down <coughs> yeah the, let's not rule anything that. out yet we we could keep it simple and make our topic of discussion next week our reactions and thoughts on the PlayStation Five press conference. Yeah, it's probably too chunky to do a new segment. Okay. Right. For that, um, it'll depend on what I'm they sure show. Do. Okay. Yeah, I think that I think uh, we'll we'll I put a pin in it and we'll tentatively make it about PlayStation Five, but yeah. we might change that depending if, on what if, they show. If not, that might just be something maybe related to The Last of Us because that's coming out next Friday. Um, yeah, we will. We'll figure some. We'll figure something out. Yeah, yeah. video game rehab. The Last of Us. <laughs> it, it's great. Give me the next one. That's the end of the show. We it's, it's... <laughs> we might be uncertain in what we're doing next week, but certainly there is not a lack of things to talk about, which yeah. you can't say about the past couple of weeks. Yes, yeah. we're, we're moving into a very exciting time. But with that, uh, so you can follow the show uh, at PressYYZ on Twitter. That's where almost all of our updates come from. Uh, and with that, I will do the social plug for everyone else. I don't remember if there was anything else to the outro that we need. Uh, so Twitch.tv you... slash PressYYZ oh. if you want to join us yes. live Wednesdays yes. at 8. 
forgot about I forgot about that whole aspect of it. But regardless, um, yeah, join us on Twitch. I think the show is getting better and better each well, week. Speaking um, of Twitch, real quick, we yeah, we did mm -hmm. something. We did. Well, d we, while the show was going know. on, and I don't think we called it out during the show, but nope. Maybe we should call it out now. We saved for the yeah, post show. Yeah, so we just we reached our well, we're not at the post show yet, but we reached fifty. <laughs> we reached fifty followers on Twitch, which yeah, is really really cool because yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we now have all of the pieces that we need to be affiliate. Uh, that's cool. If you're listening to this and haven't followed yet, follow at twitch.tv slash pressyyz. With that, I'm gonna do the social plugs for all of our hosts, starting with myself. Uh, I Instagram is where I mostly use. Uh, is the main social platform that I use. It's blatantly Alex, but I also do use Twitter, blatantly underscore Alex. And as well, YouTube, if you want to watch that video that I had, uh, that I mentioned earlier about Breath of the Wild, I'm also working on something new. I'm really excited about it. Uh, it's blatantly Alex on YouTube as well. Uh, follow me on one of the other social medias and I'll, there'll be a link to it. Uh, Mitch, where can people find you? Twitter, Instagram are my places of choice for the most part. It's Mr. Mitch George everywhere, but those are where I'm most active. Perfect. Uh, Cozy, where can people find you? Find me on Twitter at Alex Kazina and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Cozy Bear Live. I'll be streaming God of War 2018 and more of Telltale's Batman the Enemy within there very soon. Very mm. nice. Very exciting. I can't wait to hear what you think about God of War as you get further in. I gotta go back uh, to that game. Yeah, me too. Nathan, where can people find you? Uh, follow me on Twitter at the underscore nmac. I don't have any reviews to pimp this week, uh, but check out my content on ps4blog.net uh, as I have more stuff. I'll continue to pimp it on the show, so be on the lookout. Very exciting. And last but certainly not least, AJ, where can people find you? You can find me all over the internet. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, even. Uh, I, I, I use the same name everywhere. I'm at Times Hero, capital T, capital H. And with that, Thanks for playing, guys. Black Lives Matter. <laughs>